Psalm 27 and verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God's word to us this morning is coming from the book of Isaiah and Isaiah chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12, the, we will be reading uh, verse 1 to verse 6, which really comprises the whole chapter of Isaiah chapter 12. We have already uh, started a series in the, in the book of Isaiah in chapter 12, and we will surely continue this morning as we extract from this great passage of Scripture the great prophecy of Isaiah about the Messiah and his work uh, and his mission in the world. So turn with me to Isaiah chapter 12. In that day you will say, I will praise you, O Lord, for great things you have done. Your, although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With you, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among us. The word of the Lord to us this morning. What a great uh, word from the prophet Isaiah in uh, Isaiah chapter 12. This is our time we turn to the Lord in prayer and our worship. We always encourage you to know that prayer is the means and the way that God has given us for open communication between us and Him. That God wants His children to depend on Him, to come to Him in prayer. And there is no better time than when we come to worship, that we come before the Lord in His presence with our prayers. So we encourage you to keep on praying for uh, this Christmas season that is upon us. Yes, for some it is a sad time because it reminds them of those who used to be in their lives that God and His mercy has called them uh, home. The loss of loved ones and uh, at Christmas can be a very heavy burden for a lot of people to carry. Yes, we know also that it is a joyful time. It is a joyful occasion that we can introduce others to the story of Christmas, how God loves the world and sent His only Son to die on the cross for sinners. So we have the greatest opportunity every Christmas to bring Jesus Christ to the world and to our families and to our friends as we gather, as we have opportunities open to us, as we send cards and receive cards, that we send God's word to people so that they will know who Jesus is because everybody ought to know who Jesus is. This is our time of prayer. We invite you to pray for the, for the family, for the families around us, especially those who are sick, those who are short in, and uh, we uh, want you to pray for the young people as they write exams this coming week, and uh, pray for the children as well as 
they try to wrap up the the, the school year uh, or this semester and uh, let us remember to pray for them to bring them before the Lord that uh, they will know that God uh, God is 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 here and his presence is there with them and that they can always reach out to him as uh, as they come before God uh, and make their petition known unto him. So we we really want you to really pray with us this morning. As we pray, we we invite you to pray. And uh, may the Lord really uh, spirit lead you as you as you pray with us this morning I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth I will make your faithfulness known through all generation you are the creator God Please do something mighty in us today. Stir our souls, challenge our thinking, affect change, that we may go forth to love and serve Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and came into this world to to give his life so that we may be saved. Yes, It is Christmas again, Heavenly Father. For weeks we have heard the songs and carols of the season. We have sung the hymns and listened to the items exalting the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Over and over we have been reminded of the swift passage of time as we approach that day of days celebrating the occasion when Christ was born. Oh Lord, our heart is not into the argument whether it was the 25th of December or not that Jesus came into the world, Jesus was born. We just want to celebrate the fact that it was the fact of history that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He came not only into our world, but he came into our lives. He came into our families. He came to us in the means of such prolonged emphasis. We often grow weary of the music, jaded with the preparations and tired of the season before it even completed. Yet, when we pause and meditate on the meaning of the coming of the Lord and try to understand something of your purpose for Christmas, we are filled again with amazement and wonder. During these remaining days, of that celebration and that concentrated celebration when we and so many of us are frayed and weary bring us again to the remembrance of your gift to us and its meaning for all mankind Restore unto us, O Lord, the joy of our salvation and renew a right spirit within us. We come before you this morning remembering those who, those whose Christmas represent a sadness because they are missing their loved ones who used to be with them. Some, it may be the first Christmas, they are without their loved ones. We pray for them, Lord, and help us to provide them the companionship and the love of Jesus Christ as they go through their pain. 
we pray also for our children as they uh, bring this year 2023 to an end in school the excitement that is in their hearts through the excitement oh lord please help them to concentrate on you we pray for our youth especially those who are in colleges and universities right now that are writing exam this coming week we commit them to you oh lord we pray for the families that are gathering their thoughts and those who are traveling to come and gather with other family members to celebrate Christmas. Give them journey mercy. Oh Lord, may they may they really uh, forget about themselves and concentrate on you and just take this Christmas time as their privilege to worship, to get to know you better. Remembering again the deep meaning for the season. We will declare your ways to transgressors, and sinners will be converted unto you. In the name of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God's word to us, as I have already announced, is coming from the book of Isaiah. And we are considering Isaiah chapter 12. And we are reminding you as 12 that uh, you worship is with us and always with us as we worship him. And we want to give all our attention to his word every time that his word is open up to us my text is found in isaiah chapter 12 and verse 2 in the message today behold god is my salvation i will trust and will not be afraid for the lord for the lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The title of God's words to us this morning is that God is my salvation. Yes. The text declare that God is my salvation. The Christmas season should focus our attention on the great salvation that is offered through Jesus Christ. Many of us can rejoice exceedingly over the fact that through Jesus Christ our Lord, God has become our salvation. The angel said to Joseph, She shall bring forth a son and you will call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. The angels hung out over the battlements of heavens to sing. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 11, for unto us is born this day in the city of David, our Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Jesus Christ was born to be our Savior. He died on a cross to save us from the penalty of our sins and from the separation from God that really uh, sin has brought to us. Yes, sin has separated us from our God, has taken our fellowship with the God who has made us from us. Jesus came to repair that. He came to reconcile us unto the Lord our God. Jesus Christ arose from the dead triumphantly and victoriously to be our Savior. This Christmas season will be greatly reduced 
in meaning if we cannot say with the prophet God is my salvation the prophet Isaiah under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God has declared this God has become his salvation God was his salvation and this is really the aim the goal of my message to your heart this morning is that at the end of the message if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that you will make the decision from the prompting of the Holy Spirit of God in your heart that Jesus God's Son will become your salvation and if you have committed yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ for some time past maybe years or weeks or even months we want you to be reassured that uh, that Jesus Christ came into the world to be your salvation to be your savior so first i would like us to look at god is the god is the god of salvation our nation needs god's salvation we need salvation from ignorance we need salvation from the ignorance that you and I have been lived with for so many years. We live as if there is no God in the world. We live as if that we do not have a God. Jesus Christ, God's Son, has become our salvation and we need salvation from our ignorance. We need to be saved from it. We need to be saved from fear. I'm no longer afraid because I am a child of God there are many who are living in fears every single day of their lives there are those who even live in the fear of God's second appearing into the world because their heart is not ready the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to, to become our salvation. Uh, we need salvation from anger and hate. Look at what's happening all around us in the world with nations fighting others and, and the violence that is, uh, that is all around us in the world. Look at in, in, our, in our own families, in our own world, in, in our own side the hostility, the violence, the hatred. Oh, we need salvation from anger. We need salvation from hate. We need to be saved from our own anger and from the hate that is so prevalent in our hearts. We need salvation from rashness and harshness we are too quick to speak and too quick to really diss others and to do all manner of things to others and say all manner of things to them we need salvation from the wickedness and the ungodliness that is all around us the wickedness seem to uh, be the things of the day the godlessness that is all around us the more and more we are living in this world we realize this world is turning their backs against god they're turning their back against the god against the god who has made them who's been so wonderful to them who's been so good to them the ungodliness that people have time for everything else but they will not have time for god they want to celebrate some holiday but they don't want to celebrate christ we need to be saved we need god's salvation against selfishness and a hard heartedness there is no more there is no more a time that we have ever lived to see so many selfish people all around us that live for themselves 
they do not even realize that they live in families, they live in relationship, they live in a workplace where all this have to be uh, uh, take in co into consideration. The world is selfish. We are fighting that selfishness within our own soul, within our own hearts. The selfishness and the hard-heartedness that our heart is not touched anymore by the suffering of others. Oh, may uh, we realize that we need salvation from selfishness and hard-heartedness. Our families need salvation. We not only need Jesus Christ as the Savior from the penalty of sin, but we need him as our savior from the power and the practice of sin. Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem and who conquered death in the grave, lives today to help us, to help you, to help me experience God's full salvation in our family living. Too many families will not be together this Christmas because they long have not been talking to each other. They have no fellowship one with the other. Oh, that God will come in his son Jesus Christ this Christmas again to save our family and our friends from uh, grudges and and uh, discontentment that has been so prevalent in our lives. Jesus Christ who was born in Bethlehem has come to help us conquer death in the grave and he lives today to help us experience God's full salvation. Oh, may that you would open your heart to him this morning. Secondly, the prophet declared to us here, Behold, in verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. God is my salvation. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Because God was his salvation, the, the prophet Isaiah said he was able to declare, I will trust and will not be afraid. We can trust and not be afraid of the past. God is the gracious God who forgives our sins fully and freely and forever. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions and our sins from us. This God is such a merciful God that he gave us that first Christmas, his only son, that those who believe in him would receive the forgiveness of their sins. We can trust and not be afraid of the present. Bill Getter penned these words, and I quote, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Jesus Christ is alive and in and, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit. He dwells within us as close as the very breath that we breathe each and every moment. He wants to fill our hearts with the love of God each and every day. He wants to guide us with the wisdom of God. He wants to help us control ourselves by the means of the Spirit of God in our lives. The Spirit will come, Jesus said, and He will guide you in all things. We can trust 
and not be afraid of the future. As we approach the ends, the end of our year, this is the last month of this year, 2023. There is always a speculation about the future. Especially those politicians all around us. Especially those who are just leaving uh, to tell lies on social medias. Who are making all kind of claims that, that cannot be proven. Yes, it seems that some are really so fearful of even thinking what uh, 2024 is going to be like. As we approach the end of this year, there are all kind of speculation. None of us can know what the future holds. But in Jesus Christ, we know him who holds the future. Yes, because he leave, I can face tomorrow. Because I know, yes, I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living because he lives. Christ has conquered death and the grave. He has promised us the life that endures beyond the curtain that people call death. Yes, death is never the end for the Christian. Death is simple, the thing uh, that usher us into eternal life, to that brand new life that the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world and gave his life for. We can count on him for his presence to be with us, not only today, not only tomorrow, but forever and ever, that the presence of the Lord will always be with us. Oh, the only presence we can always be assured of. Yes, we can be separated from family, from families. We can be separated from loved ones and our friends. But there is nothing in all the world that can separate us from God or separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We can count on him for his presence to be with us. The psalmist said in Psalm 23 and verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Thirdly, God is my salvation. As my Savior, God is the source of my strength. A pastor visited a woman in the hospital who has just undergone major surgery following an uh, automobile accident in which her husband has been killed and she has been seriously injured. On the day following her husband's death, unexpected death, she said, God is my strength. Paul in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, Paul told this to the Philippians when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. By that triumphant testimony, the apostle was saying that which with the help that God promised to give us, with the help that God promised to give him, with the help that God promised to give me, he could face any obstacle or difficulty with confidence and hope. You and I, do, we do not need to be afraid of the future. We do not need to be afraid of 2024. There is nothing that we cannot do in the Lord Jesus Christ. He promised us. He's our guide. 
he never fails. He always keep his word and his promise to us. Yes, there's no reason to be afraid because we are God's children and he has our best interest in his, in his mind always, each and every day, every moment of our life. God is my song, the prophet Isaiah said. The angel sung to announce the birth of our Savior. Our Lord and his disciples were able to sing a hymn of praise while in the upper room before departing to Gethsemane's groom. The sadness. Christianity is the religion that puts a song in the heart. In my heart, there rings a melody, a melody, all oh, that this Christmas, in spite of circumstances and situations that you may be facing, that in your heart there will be the song of the redeemed, in your heart there will be the song of hope, in your heart there will be the song of joy, in your heart there will be the song of peace, in your heart there will be the song of forgiveness and of God's love. God uh, has given us a song. Yes, this is one of the major theme of the Christmas season. God is the God who gives us a song in our hearts. Will you sing? Will you get up from the corner? Will you get up from your bed and sing? Because God has given you a song and no one in the world, no one in the world of principalities can take that song from you. The song of the redeemed, the song of joy, 